Welcome back. So far in this series, we've built the base of our Pure X Racing Quad, which includes the PDB, the ESCs, and the motors. Now we're going to go on and we're going to start wiring up the receiver and the flight controller. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out these metal screws, which I told you in the last video in the series why I prefer not to use those, although not everybody feels that way. And I'm going to replace them with nylon standoffs and nylon screws. It's really handy to have an assortment of nylon standoffs like you see here. Uh, the standard thread size used on multi-rotors is M3. So M3 nylon standoff, just search for that and you'll find more than you ever wanted. You can get them on Amazon or Banggood or any number of places really. I'm going to be using some M3 nylon washers, that's the little white washers you see there. And I'm going to be putting two of these washers on each screw to provide about a millimeter of additional spacing between the PDB and the bottom plate of the copter. You always want to keep electrical things away from carbon fiber. They may not have electrical conductivity initially because the carbon fiber has a coating on it, but when the coating wears through, you will get electrical conductivity and then you can get some smoke coming out of something that you don't want it to. The M3 nylon washers, you can just buy a bulk pack of them. You can buy a hundred of them for a few bucks off of, I probably bought them off of Amazon, but I honestly don't remember. Just search for M3 nylon washer and you'll find what you're looking for. Next, a female to female standoff goes down over that screw. Don't worry about cinching everything up tight just yet. You're going to be pulling it all apart again at least once. Don't, anyway, uh, the female standoff is 12 millimeters. I use that because that's what I had on hand. You could probably get away with a little bit less, uh, especially if you're very, very careful about packing things in tight. But I did just fine with 12 millimeters, and it was relatively roomy, honestly. So now you can see I've got the PDB installed and all the spacers and screws and standoffs and I'm just going to check the fit up of the board. Now even if you're following along with me I recommend that you take this step because you just never know what's going to be different. See that I've got enough space there between the camera pod and the board and here I'm measuring the height to make sure that this will also fit inside the QQ190 should you be building one of those. The QQ190 has a lower camera pod than the Mitsuko receiver also plenty of room in there so we should be good to go and now begins a lot of soldering and I'm not going to show you every single joint that I soldered every single pad um, you know you prep the wires you carefully check the length of the wire uh, as I showed you in the previous video you hinge your stack so you can get at things again and you're not going to see me doing that here uh, making the mistake that I told you about in video 2.5 in this series but you get your wires ready and you solder them up according to the wiring diagram that we came up with in part one. Uh, and it's just a matter of practice. I can't show you how to make everything fit up neatly. Uh, that's just something you've got to figure out while you're doing it. On the receiver, there's a little bit of this glue holding the antenna on that's covering the RSSI pad. So first I'm going to clean that off. And after not being very successful at scraping it off, I decided to just use my soldering iron to melt slash burn it off. And that worked pretty good. The next thing I do is I build up a blob of solder on the pad. And normally when you tin a pad, you want to put just a, just a sheen of solder. You don't want a mound of solder. But for this joint on this tiny, tiny, tiny pad, I do want a mound of solder because I, I kind of just want to get the wire like near the pad and have the solder hold it down. The idea of getting this good contact between the wire and the pad, I, it's on something this small, you know, if you get it to stick, I, I consider myself lucky. So there's also no possible way I could show you me actually doing that, something this small with my camera equipment and so forth. So you just have to settle for a still of the result. And you can see here in the zoomed in view that I've got a peak of solder on it, which is normally a bad thing, but here I've done it on purpose. And here's the almost finished receiver. I've got the power, ground, and signal wire, and also the RSSI wire soldered on, but I have not yet done the wire for the smart port telemetry. For the smart port telemetry, I'm gonna solder a wire to this pin, and success. Again, I don't show you the actual soldering because it's just way too small and fiddly, but here's a close up look at the joint. You can see there is not much holding that wire on there, and it'll be very important to use some kind of physical support like tape or hot glue. If this wire gets pulled on, you can pull on it a little, but it will break if it's allowed to uh, vibrate or get pulled on. 
But if you restrain it physically, it'll be just fine, even though that's a very, very small joint. Now you're gonna see some video of me wrapping the receiver in this silicone tape. I gotta tell you, the more and more I worked with this silicone tape, especially after the job was done and I had to go back and do repairs, the less impressed I was with it. And I don't think I'll be using it in the future, but I've shot all this video using it and I'm not gonna throw the video out either. So uh, know that this is how I did it the first time, but I don't think it's how I would do it again. Whatever you do though, you have to provide some kind of mechanical reinforcement for those wires going to the RSSI and the telemetry pad. Those joints are so small, they will not stand up to any kind of stress. So put some electrical tape around the receiver, use some heat shrink, use some hot glue, whatever. But uh, I don't think the silicone tape I would prefer or use again. To solder on the power leads, I use my biggest soldering iron tip. Now I'm gonna tin the ends of the power leads. This thin solder that I'm using is really not ideal. Um, but I only keep one size on hand, so I have to feed a ton of solder in to get it to really fill this big 12 gauge wire with solder. When you solder on big wire like this, you just wanna hold the heat until the joint flows. It may take a second to soak the heat and offer all the solder to flow, get it good and hot and wet, and, uh, and see, it's not quite how it needs to be. I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna reflow it, and I'm gonna fix it. I apologize for my head being in the shot there. Uh, I, I'm even holding it down now with a screwdriver tip to, uh, to, because it's too hot for my hand to hold in place long enough for it to really flow. And you do the same thing for the negative lead, of course, and there you go. You're gonna wanna make sure that you have the vertical standoffs for your camera pod in place when you're installing your power leads. I do not have them in place here. And I ran into a problem when I tried to move these electronics over to the QQ190. The spacing on the vertical standoffs was different and the positive power lead was actually, like it was right where the standoff was, it wouldn't work. And see, so I had to move it sort of to the side just a little bit. Uh, so make sure that everything fits up correctly. And as I said in an earlier video, it might actually work better to turn the RROSD to the side so the power lead comes out the side rather than having it come out the back. So just check your fit up there and make sure that everything's gonna work before you get too much further. Next, I solder the receiver to the underside of the flight controller. A technique I like to use is to just sort of roughly get the joint stuck and then use a screwdriver to hold the wire more securely and, and reflow the joint with the screwdriver holding it down to get it really nice and firm. Here I've soldered the telemetry lead to TX2, the transmit pad on the UART2. And here I am soldering on the wire for the battery voltage sensor. I know that some of you are noticing that that is a terrible solder joint. You're supposed to have copper to copper contact between the wire and the pad and then the solder flows around that. But here I have a space, maybe a half a millimeter of spacing between the wire and the pad and then their solder is bridging that gap. And that is a bad thing to do because solder is brittle and will crack over time uh, and it just isn't strong enough. Now, I could probably leave this and get away with it, especially because it's VBAT, which is not flight critical, but I do go back and fix it. But in order to fix it, I blocked the camera view, so I can't show you that. And so here is the flight controller and the receiver together. Uh, I have made the hinge mistake again. Notice that the telemetry wire, the brown one on the left, will prevent me from folding out the receiver if I ever need to do any kind of maintenance. And then I zip tie the receiver to the underside of the flight controller. I did run into a problem with this install where when the zip tie was on, something about the way it was squeezing the receiver was causing me to get fail-safe dropouts. And as soon as I cut the zip tie, it was fine. So right now I'm just using double-sided foam tape by itself, which I don't like to do. I don't know if maybe I have a slightly cracked trace on the receiver somewhere or something. If you do go ahead and zip tie this, make sure you put some kind of uh, cushioning like, like foam tape so that when the zip tie squeezes the receiver against the flight controller, nobody gets too stressed. They don't like to be hugged too tightly. Now we solder up the five volt for the flight controller from the ROSD. And in case you didn't realize, you can solder this to any ground and any five volt header. They're all the same, it doesn't really matter. So any spare motor header or anywhere that there's a five volt or a ground you could use. You could even use the five volt in the ground from a UART if that's what you wanted. They're all the same. Next, I'm gonna solder the VBAT sensor lead to the main battery pads. I also sometimes solder it to the ESC pads. It's sort of a toss up. All right, so let's review. We've got VBAT here going into the appropriate pads on the flight control board. Then we've got the power, ground, and signal going to the right place. 
and we've got RSSI going to the appropriate pad on the ROSD. Everything looks pretty good here. And now I'm going to solder on the wire headers for the camera and the video transmitter. Uh, it's pretty tight work getting in here at these pads. Uh, I might have been better off to do this with a chisel tip instead of with a pencil tip. With a pencil tip you got no way to really push down on the wire with the soldering iron, whereas with the chisel tip you can. When you're direct soldering these pads like this, uh, and, and if you haven't got a clean factory board with clear through holes that you can stick the wires through, you have to lay the wire down on top of the pad and then solder it down. And you have to be super, super careful that the wire is not going past the pad and touching something or bridging somewhere that it shouldn't be. So think about the angle that you approach this. You can see I'm kind of doing these off at a little bit of a 45 degree angle to make it easier to get them not to overlap with each other. And you can see as I'm doing this one, uh, it's not quite stuck right, it's not quite centered on the pad, and I keep at it until it's exactly right. This is your camera and your video transmitter. Without this, your copter will go into the ground. So be very, very careful to get these right. Do everything right here. No fudge. And you can see here that that wire is not completely down in the solder. Let's see if I go back and fix it. No, no I didn't. Oh well. And then we do the same thing. Uh, if the other one was the video transmitter, this is the camera or vice versa. Now we're really getting somewhere. Uh, many, many important things are wired up. We got the video transmitter and the camera lead. I do want to tell you, uh, that give yourself a little more room for the camera lead than you think. Uh, mine was too short because I had a top connector on my camera. I had to desolder this and, and solder a whole new one on. So, ugh, don't do that. And that brings us to the end of this part of the series. Uh, we, we're going to put those nylon screws through the top of the flight controller. Uh, and then we will be done with the whole electronics package. The motors, the ESCs, the flight controller, the receiver, the PDB, and the OSD. The only thing that remains is to install the camera pod. But really, at this point, that's the easy part. And we'll talk about the camera pod and any other final thoughts I have about this build in the next and final part of this series. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And as always, happy flying.